Hey everybody, it's Matt the Dice Chucker from the Literary Gamers coming to you with another book review. Um, I do have some notes about this book on my phone, so if you see me looking down, that is what I'm doing, and I'm pulling up the first note I have here. So anyway, we are taking a look today at the sixth book in the Sword of Truth series, Faith of the Fallen. Uh, this is the end of the Imperial Order cycle, uh, though the story keeps going. Um, and sorry about this and um you really kind of get a full grasp of kind of what's going to be happening from now on the camera's over there uh so uh, i said this before and i will talk about each of the wizard rules uh, this one is the only the wizard's sixth rule is the only sovereign you can allow to rule you is reason um and we'll why that's important to the story we'll find out so uh, if you remember from last week with blood of not blood of the fold sorry uh soul of the fire um what we had is kaylin was beaten and bruised by i think it was some thugs um and you know she lost the baby that she was having with richard because of all of the um the bruising and the beating uh, so he's taking her back to Westland so she can heal. So at the beginning of the book, he's building a house. It's Kaelin, Kara, and Richard. Um, but the people of Westland aren't very welcoming to him. Uh, they think that, you know, well, anytime you have this sort of thing, well, you're going to bring bad stuff with you if you are bringing something like that to our home. So um, after a while, uh, a woman named Sister Nikki, who we've seen before in Stone of Tears, puts a maternity spell on Kaylin, so any pain she feels, Kaylin will feel because she wants to take Richard away for the sole purpose of making him understand what he's fighting against. So the she's under, not under the impression, she truly believes that the Imperial Order is in the right and that their way of life is helpful to people. And Richard knows for a fact, because he always knows, uh, that what th the way they live is not right. So, um, yeah, so she's got the spell on Kaylin, and, um, all the pain that she'll ever feel is what Kaylin will feel, and all, everything, basically. Uh, so, on the surface, if, if Sister Nikki dies, Kaylin would die. So, she's basically forcing Richard to be with her, um, and then she takes him down to, um, the old world, where, um, the Imperial Order is reigning supreme and she shows richard that way of life meanwhile kaylin is kind of thrust back into fighting the war and defending her homeland that is the midlands which are part of the daharan empire now we get to see kaylin back in that military role we even get to see kaylin's siblings um now uh if you've really read um more of of the series and i didn't talk about this in some of the other ones but Kaylin's siblings are from uh, her father's first marriage, and then Kaylin's mother, the confessor, confessed um, Kaylin's father, and then that's how they had Kaylin. Um, and I, I'm not, I can't remember if there was any resentment from the siblings towards Kaylin, but I, I do remember that there was some resentment towards the mother because of all of that going on. You know, uh, you look up the confessor lore online, and you can see why. Um, but you know some interesting stuff happens on on the war front and you get to kind of see um more of the battles more of the strategy if there was my one complaint from blood of the fold all the way to soul of the fire which is only three books i wish we saw more of the war happening um give me more characters and we'll talk more about that in just a bit uh, and and kind of show me you know the type of strategies being used. I find that very interesting. Good kind kind of takes it another way. In uh, Blood of the Fold, you kind you had the siege at the end. You got to see a little bit of um, how they fight. Uh, Temple of the Winds. You really didn't see much of anything as far as the fighting goes. You saw it mainly through Nathan Rawls' eyes, and it was very minimal. I wish there was more of it. Uh, and Soul of the Fire, you saw a lot of the political world and the way that the Imperial Order is trying to gain allies. In this one, you get to see some full-on battles. And, you know, Terry Goodkind gets criticized a lot for uh, his writing style. But I do think he writes in a very exciting way. 
when it comes to action. So I'll give him a lot of credit on that. Uh, the way he writes action is very good. Most of his books are dialogue driven, um, and this is no exception. Um, but the nice thing is he is very dialogue driven through uh, through the battles as well, which is incredibly helpful. Um, I know some fantasy series, I'm not going to mention which ones, where when they write battles and they write action scenes, it's these paragraph long pages, sorry, page long paragraphs, and you just get lost in the density of it. And for some readers, that's fine. For me, you know, if I'm in the middle of a page long paragraph, my mind starts to wander. I'm like, well, did, did I have did I have soup or did I have mac and cheese for lunch? Oh wait, there's action going on. It's hard for me to understand actions going on when I'm not engaged. Goodkind writes some really engaging action, and I, I like that a lot. I can uh, give him a lot of credit for for keeping me engaged the whole time. While the war is going on, Richard is being introduced to the lifestyle down in the old world, where the imperial order is supreme. Uh, it is a very communist style of government, uh, as we've seen so far, and you'll see much later in the series, going all the way to the end of the first time Good Kind ended Sword of Truth, which is, um, he, he really does hate communism, and he wants you to know it, and he's going to spend a long time talking about how that's bad. Um, Richard is trying to tell the people there, and even Sister Nikki, that you know, this isn't really the, the best way to live your life, you know, and, and you're, you're um, taking something away from somebody to give it to someone who needs it, yes, but it, it kind of, he kind of gives you the feeling that there are some people that are just going to sit back and do nothing and always are going to be benefiting while someone is always getting stuff taken away from them for the sake of another. It, it's that whole anti-communism style that good kind really... You know, it's, it's where he infuses his politics in the book. Now, for many people, they hate this book for that. If you go on Goodreads and just look at the one-star and two-star reviews, you're going to see some really angry people. But Richard is able to get through to some of them. He does a lot of his work in secret. Uh, he's building this statue. He was told he has to build the statue, and it's the statue that's on the cover. Let me hold it up again. Uh, and I can't remember what it's called. But uh, that is the statue on the cover. And, um, of course, there's a statue on the cover. It's just what I showed you. But anyway, um, apparently, you know, the, the message that he's trying to send with that gets through to some people. And there's kind of like a, a bit of a riot. Um, I read this book years ago. So I, this is basically going on what I remember. Kaylin is able to get back to Richard. The ending is very good. Um, there's one thing I can always say about good kind uh, that I can't say about every fantasy author is that he sticks to landing. Um, the last hundred pages of every sort of truth book up to the end of the first time Good Kind ends it. It's always very exciting. And um, I, I would say that this is one of his better endings. Now, let's go into some of my criticisms about the book. I want to start with the cons first. Uh, the, I've already said it. Uh, the political grandstanding. That he's doing the the anti you know my governmental beliefs are just going to be here and you have to deal with it and i'm going to write a whole series based on that it's really when if, if you're if you're not a fan of what's happening in here you might see it like that you might say well he's just taking all the time in the world to to use this as his as, 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 uh, as his platform and just to tell you that you know if you don't agree with what i'm saying here then there's a massive problem and that's really not what's happening um, but after a while it gets tiring. Now it's not too bad in this one. When we get to especially Naked Empire, it's rough. And uh, those, uh, it's coming. Trust me, it's coming. And there's even a little bit of that in the Chainfire series, uh, but not too much. Um, and in the Richard and Kalen series that was after the uh, Sword of Truth uh, was done and he went back to it, there's some of it in there, but not a heck of a lot. It really disappears uh, with the uh, Nikki Sister of Darkness series and um, the Children of Dahar. It's, it's really just a return to form of basic fantasy. So um, if I tell people, if you're going to read all of these books, and I, I think there's got to be 22 now. Um, so there were 17 with Warheart, and then he added four with, with, with Nikki. 
and then technically it was four or five. I think it was five with Children of Dahara. So if you got all those with the tiny little um, novellas, it's 26. But if there is a one book edition of Children of Dahara, and I would say that's probably your best bet because it will, when we get there, I'm doing all the Children of Dahara books in one video because some of them are so tiny. Anyway, that's besides the point. So a lot of that disappears by that. Uh, by that moment and I think he did that because he got so much feedback off of that um, some of the other criticisms I have uh, I wish we spent more time in Westland but I mean granted there wasn't much to do over there it was just nice to see Richard go back home compare that to um, when some of the main characters in Wheel of Time head back home to the two rivers they spent they had a little bit of a conflict there and I liked that um, it was nice to see it's nice to see your heroes go back home after being on the road for so long I do like the end of Return of the King where they have to where they go back to the Shire and it's just things are still, you know, run amok and not run amok, but I mean it's it's become, you know, just in a completely different society with Saruman in control. I liked that. I like seeing what happens when you go back home after Grand Adventures and you have to, you know, help out what's hap help out what's going on there. This one, I mean, I wasn't surprised that the people of Westland were very um they kind of wanted Richard out, but um, I do wish it, we spent some more time there. So, um, and that's really my big cons with the book. Uh, otherwise, I love a lot of the stuff that's happening here. Um, the, the wizard's sixth rule about the only sovereign you should have is reason is because he feels that the communist society is unreasonable. And he wants to try to show them what a reasonable mind can do. Uh, so that's why wizard's sixth rule play such an important role here and it's also why the political grandstanding doesn't bother me because it's actually a plot point if you're going to use that and yes i got sick and tired of it after a while but because it was a plot point eventually i did enjoy it um so there's that then um i loved seeing more of the war i thought that was very important for us to see because otherwise i have no reason if this was yet another one where we didn't get a lot of of battle scenes or really kind of see uh, all aspects of what's happening, um, then I would say, eh, okay, fine. I mean, it's, it's not great, but it's still another addition to the series. But this one was such an exciting way to show the, the enemy's fighting style and to see the way that the Daharan Empire was fighting. I thought that was very well done. Um... Nikki, I think, is a great antagonist, and this is the only book where she's really an antagonist. Um, I and, and this is something with good kind that I think is interesting. Wizard's first rules antagonist was Dark and Raw, um, and and uh, in in some form, Denna was an antagonist too, but she was more like um, kind of a side villain, where Dark and Raw was, you know, the the point of the whole thing. Here we have Emperor Jagong, or Yagong, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and each book in this Imperial Order series has had a different villain besides him. And, you know, that can go down with the whole, you know, you have an antagonist for the book, but an antagonist for the larger series. And that's fine. Um, but there's not a lot, even all the way up to here, to make me say, wow, that guy needs to be stopped. Besides the idea of how the government looks back at home or how uh, devoted his followers are. It just seems like he's a force to be reckoned with, yes, but I don't see him really as a threat yet. Uh, we'll get to, uh, in other books later on, how much of a threat he really can be. So uh, what else did I think was really good But this one? Uh, just the level of excitement in the story was something that you know drove me to finish it. I think when I first read this around page 450, I couldn't stop reading it. It was one of those things where you read a chapter or two a day, and then you get to a point in the book where you just can't stop reading. It has to be completed. And sometimes you're like, I have to finish this book by the end of the day. I need to know what happens. Um, Priory of the Orange Tree was like that too, and I hope to review that eventually. Um, well, I had something on my mind I was going to say that I... oh. Now, if we uh, take a look at this and the format of this book, this is a very close brother to Stone of Tears. 
Um, a lot of people are going to make that distinction. Richard gets taken away. Caelan has to lead a war effort. And eventually the two get back together by the end of the book. And I liked Stone of Tears, but I still think Faith of the Fallen did it better. Terry had some time to grow as a writer. He had some time to really formulate the story. And I think that it really paid off more here in Faith of the Fallen. Now, as far as Terry Goodkind's style goes and his writing... Uh, if you were to go on Goodreads and take a look at his ratings, I would actually tell you, if you want an unbiased, fair review, honest review of this book, read the three-star ratings. The ones and the twos tend to just go off on him because they don't like him him as a person. Or they don't like him and his, his, uh, his political stuff. Um... You know, he, he is a very uh, divisive figure in, in fantasy writing. Um, so if you want to know more about that, I would say read the three star ones if you want something a bit more honest. The four and the five stars tend to be people who have really been engaged in the series this far. And I should say, if you've gotten this far in Sword of Truth, there's no reason to stop. Uh, unless, of course, um, so for, for example, I read the first four books in Song of Ice and Fire and I read maybe a third of uh, Dance with Dragons. But since there was no date for Winds of Winter, I was like, I'm going to forget everything that happened from Dance with Dragons uh, and then I'm going to have to read the whole series again. So I'm not sure if Terry had that problem. Um, so if you had stopped reading the series because you were waiting for the next one and then you just missed that it came out, I would say give it a shot again. Uh, at least get to Confessor, which is the first ending, if you want something that's a satisfying conclusion to the series. So that's going to be it for me today. I'm trying to keep these reviews under 20 minutes, and I'm looking at my timer right now, and I see we're at 17. So that is Faith of the Fallen, the sixth book in the Sword of Truth uh, franchise. I initially gave this one five stars. I think that rating still stands. Uh, they, this is probably my favorite book in the series, and that includes the whole encompassing um, story. So, have you read Faith of the Fallen? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, and then, uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It helps us out, get, uh, it, it helps our reach, and it shows me that you want more content as well. We'll see you next time, everybody, for... Pillars of Creation, and that's going to be a rough one. Just letting you know right off the bat. See you then, everybody.